Welcome to What the World Needs is Jesus broadcast. We've got an announcement for you today. What the World Needs is Jesus will be at Wills Creek Assisted Living in Fort Payne, Alabama every Wednesday evening at 1.30 p.m. The address there is 1050 Airport Road, West Fort Payne, Alabama, 35968. We'll be singing and bringing the word. Everyone is invited to come out and help us sing. You may come to be a blessing, but you will leave with a blessing. We ask that you say a prayer for the residents there. For more information, you can contact Brother Ricky Phillips at 256-630-1262. Got a message coming from Brother Harold O'Neill. The title of his message is Learn of Jesus. He'll be preaching from Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. We'll have a song coming from David Cordell singing Midnight Cry. If you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and subscribe, like, and click the bell to turn on your notifications on YouTube. Follow, like, and share on Facebook, and check us out on Instagram for some inspirational posts. Now let this video be a blessing. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, I want to say friends, and uh, each and every one that's out there listening. Uh, if some of you know me and some of you don't, I say hello to you anyhow. We're the, you know, we're the fellowship of mankind. Uh, hopefully, we could uh, are the fellowship of the family of God. Yeah. Oh, and some that I ain't getting to see on in this world. Maybe I'll get to see you later in in heaven. So I uh, just want to say hello today, and just want to uh, uh, tell you today to, uh, and ask you and thank you for continuing to listen to. What the world needs yes, is Jesus. Yes. And that's the answer to everything. That's the answer to everything Amen. is Jesus. Amen. I know he sure solved my problems. And uh, I know I have problems of life, but he solved them too. So I want to say to you today, uh, everybody knows what we're, uh, what's starting to happen out there in the world. They talk about this uh, COVID reappearing, and it is real, and it's a, uh, it's a danger, and we all need to be careful. And uh, but we don't need to. the biggest part of it. And the problem is, is fear. Yeah. Right. It's fear. And so we don't need to allow fear to cause us control our actions and control our the way we live our life. Don't fear. Be wise. And being wise means to do certain things, take certain precautions, uh, stay away from certain places now because I do acknowledge this, that thing's real. Mm -hmm. And it is killing people, and I got loved ones that are being affected by it. Uh, let, let me, uh, a lot of people say, I trust the Lord. Well, can I say, it's one thing to say, I trust the Lord, but are we actually doing that on a daily basis? All right, I want to say this to you too. I feel this way. I'm just telling you how I feel about it. I trust the Lord that if I make my best effort and do what is uh, good for me and safe, not tempting anything or anybody, just to say, uh, well, I'm going to be careful. I'm going to wear my mask, and I got my mask in my pocket, but right here at this, right where I'm at right now, we're we on holy ground, and it's mm -hmm. not needed on holy ground. Amen. Now, oh. Uh, Here's the way that I see trust in the Lord. I trust the Lord that after I've given my best effort and been wise and not foolish and don't let what other people say cause me to respond and react. Do what I feel led of the Lord to do and what the good uh, spirit in us tells us to do. Here's how I see this. I trust the Lord that after I've done that, I won't get that virus. Well, let's go a step further. I trust if I do get it, it won't kill me. Amen. All right, let's go a step further. Now, I trust, main issue, trust. I trust if it does kill me, I'll go to heaven. Amen. 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 See, because the Lord said so, and that third trust right there depends totally on Jesus and what he's doing in my life. The other two, I just trust in well, that may be my wisdom and, and, and good and all. And then if I get the doctor's wisdom and all, 
But when it comes to that third, I trust the Word of God. Yes. And I can trust that right there. So yes, sir. really, trust and doubt don't go together. It, it's just like a, you write a word on the trust. And then you say, well, yeah, but I don't know. You've just erased trust. That's right. Trust is a response, a reaction. It's how you do what you do about a situation. There's a scripture that says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not to thine own understanding. Always acknowledge him. I didn't know I was going to quote that, but that's what he's saying right now. Brother. Lean not to thine own understanding. I don't understand so many things in this world. I don't ever understand everything about God. But I do know, thank God, when I get my mind up on Jesus yeah. and, and look up to him and call on that name, I understand yeah. what I feel. And I understand that when I do what he tells me to do and things go to happening, if I stand on what he tells me to do, I understand things change. Sometimes I face difficulties in my trust in the Lord. I just wait on him. I don't try to fix it myself because I done took care of that when I come to him and asked him to forgive me and lead me and guide me and correct me. And when I make an effort to get the word of God in me, that's all we can do. That's all we can do. And the rest of it depends upon him. So see, that's trust in the Lord. That's trust in the Lord. Uh, a lot of people say, uh, Lord, I trust you're going to heal me. And then the devil moves. And you say, oh, man, I guess maybe it ain't. What did you just do? What did I just do? The Lord mentioned that to me one day. He said, why do people say they trust me and they got faith in me? And you pray. And you say, Lord, I believe you're going to take care of it. Yeah. Then the devil does something. And then all the man said, well, I guess it ain't going. He said, why do people say they trust me? And then they exercise their faith in what the devil does. Maybe, maybe we ain't realized that. And I said, we. If we say, Lord, I trust you with that, and then uh, the devil makes a response, and then we kind of say, well, well, maybe. Maybe it ain't his will. Read the word and see what his will is. It's not God's will for us to be sick. No, it ain't. It ain't God's will for nobody to go to hell. Do they? And are they? They are. What would that tell you? Somebody's coming up short and it ain't in God. You can have a, a power plant, you know, the biggest power plant they are. Right now we're on the air, so that means we're using electricity, but it's generated by a power plant. But you know what? If something happens and we lose the power here, it's not the power plant. It's a connection between here and there. All right, if you're looking to God for something, and then something goes to happen by a different source, it ain't God's fault. There's a shortage somewhere between here and there. What is the only thing the Bible says without faith we, it's impossible to please God? Your and my faith is simply this. Our response to what God's word says well, I got faith, but you know how it is. God, our response to what God has said. And the Lord don't look down and say, well, bless his heart, he's doing the best he can. Uh, God loves, has compassion, but his word is for correction. The Spirit of God will correct you. Yes, he will. Yeah. He'll tell you don't do that. I was praying about something one time. And uh, the next day I mentioned again, he said, I thought you said you trusted me to forgive you for that. And I said, yes, sir, Lord, I do. And he said, what are you talking about it for then? It's just the Lord showed me right now. It's just like a, say, a mayonnaise or, or Kool-Aid or anything like that right there. When you come to God, ask him something, and you can feel his answer. And then... Like you have some mayonnaise or something now. You open the jar, get what you want out of it, and you put the lid back on, but you don't tighten it up. How many times have you ever found something in a, 
where women can and stuff, or you found something maybe in a store or in your house, you look around and you see, hey, something got to then. How many times have you believed, boy, I believe God at church, woo, whoopee, I believe God. Get home, next morning wake up and say, man, Lord, I thought, don't think, believe. Yes, amen. And believing is sometimes waiting, speaking. The Bible says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. If you, what's going on in your mind, in my mind, doesn't match up what comes out here, there's a problem between here and here. Oh, yes. And it's got to be right. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. So therefore, where would the problem be in our life if we've got problems? I can tell you where it's at in mind. It's me. It'll be me. It'll be my perception. It'll be my words. And it'll be my actions. Faith, living for God, it's not something you say, it's something you do. Jesus didn't just say he was the son of God. He was. Yes. He didn't say, I come to pay the price for your sins. He did. Amen. And even when he got to the point of where he could stop them, he could have. When they had him there in, in, uh, in the garden, they come up before him, and old Peter took out his sword. Like a lot of time, we get real offensive. Yeah? Yeah. Just because the brother next door don't believe that what you've said about what God's going to do, that ain't what's concerning God. What do you think about it? What do you do? Why, and well, what do I do? Not trying to accuse nobody, but we all have this problem. Yeah. What do I do about it? It ain't what you say, it's what you do. See, uh, God's word is true and everything says, it ain't what God said, it's what he done. Huh? For God so loved Ooh, the world. That's, he said that now. That's good. That's right. That he gave mm -hmm. his only begotten son, that whosoever would believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. What he said is important and vital. That's communication. He communicated with the human race. And he'll communicate with me and you. But it's what he does that is so beneficial. The words are letting us know what he's thinking, what he's planning, and, 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 and just letting us know, hey, I got you, dude. I know what you're talking about. Uh -huh. But then again, what does he do? He'll keep his word. You and I may back off and make a mistake, but he'll never do that. But without faith, without faith. So today, if you're having a problem, just make sure you make sure you're in the Word. Let let me read something here. The Lord's showing me this right here. A lot of people don't think God showed stuff, but He, he will. Yeah, you know. Oh. Uh, that reminds me one time in the Bible when a. Uh, a prophet, old prophet, got out, out rambunctious and got got kind of uh, disobedient. And he was riding a donkey. Donkey going off up to our, just getting it. Uh -huh. And that donkey seen an angel with a sword. And that donkey stopped. Uh -huh. The prophet didn't see it, but the donkey did. Ain't it a good thing that somebody can see? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can you see in the Word of God and in your life where you say, Lord, I did what you said? Now, where somebody might need to hear that or not, but I mean, I just know what comes. Uh, being saved is kind of like... Let, let me read this right here first. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. To me, he said, you come. I will give. 
you read. Folks, today, that's what we need to do. Need to come to him. The Lord started showing me it's kind of like a swimming pool. Now, when I was younger, you could go swimming in, in the back water. It wasn't polluted. You could go, there was all kind of creeks you could go in. We could even take it on down to a, a, a bathtub or a shower. It's kind of like that. The creek we used to go in, when we would think about the creek, didn't you say, hey, come on in? The creek was there. It was up to me to come in. Brother God has presented a way of power to do it. It's not up to him this day and time what goes on in your life. It's up to you and I how we receive yeah. it. If a person don't go, I used to go and I'd be, it'd be so hot. And I'd stand there on that bank and I'd say, I'm hot. That water didn't talk, but I knew. Come on in. Uh, the water didn't way. object, and that's what it was put there for. <laughs> Even in a bathtub. That's why you run that, water in yeah. a bathtub? So you can get in there, and what does it do? It does several things to you. If you're tired, it relaxes you. Yes, sir. If you're dirty, it cleans you. Amen. And it's just a good feeling. Being saved is, my wife used to tell me, it's like she's taking a bath. And and in the Spirit of God, what I'm talking about, in the Spirit of God in you, it'll wash that dirt off. Yeah. It'll wash the, the guilt and the trouble and the fault away from you. You know, because I used to get out and it wasn't my fault, I'd sweat. it. Oh, boy. But that water, that water would wash that sweat away. The smell, yeah. smelt better, felt better. Had a better attitude. Yes, sir. It was on the road again. That's the way it is in, in in the Spirit of God, through the Word of God, by the Spirit of God. Clean you. It'll clean you. And in this world, the sin that's in this world, we hear it, we see it, and it does touch our lives. It really does. I have problems sometimes. Now, I don't quit and run back out in the world, but I have problems sometimes containing myself. But God, he made a covenant with me. As long as I trust him, he'll be there for me. Praise the Lord. Yes. Amen. Yes. Just like, it's just like that Lord started showing me that swimming pool. It'd do so much for you. Swimming pool, whatever. It, uh, well, in a swimming pool or a bath, it's prepared for you to do those things for you. Relax you, clean you, yes. give you rest. And that's what and the Bible even says in one place, by the washing of the water by the word. Yeah. He refers to it in that sense. The Spirit of God, uh, I remember the first time I really felt it, it's just like a relieving good, cool water in a real hot day. And this world, because we're in the flesh, really bears down on us. But here comes that spirit water. Oh, hello. And even, I would say, be baptized. Yes. That's a spiritual act, but it nevertheless, it's an act of faith. Right. Today, here's what we need to do. Here's what we need to do. I need it, you need it. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will keep you rest. Now listen to this, though. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. It didn't say learn of the church world. Learn of your brother and sister. Learn about the government. Learn about what the doctor said. Learn about the virus. It said learn of me. Amen. Yep. It ain't complicated. It's simple. Learn of him. For I am meek and lowly in heart. That just means right there, lowly in heart means he don't have no desire to bully any of us yeah. or to make us do anything. That's what it means, lowly in heart. It's, I love you. Yes. 
It's just that simple. And ye shall find rest under your souls. It didn't say your flesh. It said your soul. You can rest up and still go to hell in your body. Yeah. But boy, you get that soul rested and renewed, you're going to be with the Lord. Amen. Amen. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. He's saying again, it ain't complicated. All this that's coming on, uh, whether it be a personal, family problem, man and a wife problem, man and a child problem, and I've, we've been through them things. And possibly you have too. But get Jesus right in the middle of that thing. Get right in the middle of that thing and see if he can't handle both sides. That's like sometimes I say, Lord, help my wife. I do. And she's the same thing. And then I try to help him. Now, Lord, if you need a little help, I got a few ideas here. Amen. Keep your ideas to yourself. I'm just talking about me. <laughs> and I know for a fact she told the Lord to help me. Mm -hmm. One day me and her was having a little, uh, no, don't look at me like that. <laughs> Wow. One man said, we've been married 40 years and they never had an argument. I say, oh, think again. I say, now, possibly you ain't never exchanged blows. Right. You ain't never got a gun out and threatened. But you had problems. Oh, yes, you have. Oh, now, come on. Yeah, yeah you right. have. You don't got to tell me about them or nobody else. God knows. I was kind of ornery one morning, felt bad. That's why I need God to correct me. I come back in the house, my wife, she, I just, I don't mind telling you, I, I don't want to fix her wagon that day. I had something I wanted to say to her, and I said it. And I went in, and I knew it was time to go to the barn. <laughs> my shop. I knew it was time to go. Oh, yeah. yes. See, me and they are something we can do. See, that, that's part of my faith. Look, I'm trusting the Lord, and I'm getting out of here. I'm going out yonder. So my trusting in God paid off. Got out there and done what I was doing out there, and I come back in the house. Wife sitting over at the table just laughing. I said, what's wrong with you? I thought she'd mock him a little bit. She said, God spoke to me. I said, what did he tell you? Now, I'm telling this is honest for my hand. I ain't lying to you. I don't lie. I do not lie. Amen. I'm not saying, telling you I'm honest. I'm just telling you, I don't lie. Mm -hmm. Because a lie is something you deliberately do, and I do not. Right. I ain't bragging. I don't lie. Mm -hmm. I said, what are you laughing about? She said, God spoke to me. I said, what did he say? She said, he told me he don't pay you no attention that <laughs> he knew how I was. <laughs> Amen, brother. <laughs> So don't pay him no attention. You know how he is. Thank God. Thank God he intervened. Right, right. And and I thought that was a good thing. Yeah. I think I'll ease over and sit down and change the conversation from what it was when I left. Amen. Folks, listen, we need Jesus. We need Jesus Amen. in our own life. We need Jesus to cleanse us of our sins. Yeah. We need the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Folks, I did not quit sinning. I did not quit drinking. I did not quit lusting. I, now hear me, mm -hmm. don't just hear that part. I was delivered, thank God, thank by the power of God. Hallelujah. By the power of God. Yeah. You know, one day the Lord spoke to me and he said, you know about these you know, we can say, oh, I feel the Lord, this, that, and you. And he said, you know what that is when you feel that right there? I said, well, it's a spirit. And he said, that is the same power that raised Jesus Ooh, from the God. dead, the same power that he created this earth, that. and the same power that will bring you home. Yes, sir. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So, folks, when, when we get to pray and we feel the presence of God, yes. that's the same power. That's oh, God. Yes. yes, sir. Yes, sir. That ain't just a representative. That's him. Yes. Praise the Lord. That's good preaching, brother. Yes. That's God. Yes. 
So the doctor told me here, what about said, you got this. You got things around your spinal cord. Mm -hmm. In the operating room, I was paraplegic. My body was wanting to quit working. But I want to tell you something. I said, this right here. Yeah. It's still working. Yeah. Still working tonight. It worked the day that I come to him and I talked to him. Hallelujah. And I got the burden lifted off of me of sin. Yeah. I got the guilt lifted out of me and I got washed good. Yeah. My thoughts changed. I had power in there. Absolutely. You've got power yes, sir. to make decisions. You say, well, the devil still says things to me. Just tell him it ain't doing no good. You ain't interested. A lot of people say, well, if God's so good and all this, why does the enemy still be able to talk at me and threaten me and all? I said, well, I'll ask. Uh, I know what the Bible teaches, but a lot of times certain things, I said, I just need a word from the Lord. Mm -hmm. He said, son, if I stop that, he said, I'd be taking your free will away. He said, I can't do that. If you ain't got free will, then you, your choice don't matter. It don't. If you ain't got it. But with it, it makes a difference. Yeah. Today, let me read it one more time. I'm going to back up and I'll read it the whole thing again. Come unto me. That's what the Lord wants me to say today. The, the whole of what I'm fixing, the whole thing, what I'm saying, the Lord wants me to say it today. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Oh, that's good news. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Now, that's a request. Learn. I drove over here a while ago, but you know what? The first thing I done before I ever could go anywhere or anyway, I had to learn how to drive. I had to learn. When I got saved, I said, God, I don't know what to do. It's coming Sunday, and I wasn't no church person or nothing like that. I said, God, I don't know what to do because I wasn't very impressed by Christians and especially ministers. But see, I didn't understand. The only perfect Christian you'll ever find, you, you've got to make sure you get there because they're in heaven. Yeah, see? That's right. The that's only right. perfect one is in heaven. So you'll find them there. So make sure you go. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. God's got a simple plan. Men are complicating it. I complicate so many things in my life. I do. I do. But there's one thing I'm not complicated about. I know who to trust. I trust him more than I trust me. And I ain't lying to you. I know my heart and mind, and I know I, I, I'm not playing. I'm not lying. But I also know one thing about it. He is more than able mm -hmm. to do what I ask him to do. Folks, he's more than able. Yes. Like I said, this virus coming around, be wise. Don't be foolish. Don't get scared and upset. Bottom line, if you'll follow the leadership of the Lord, he'll tell you what to do. The medical people say, why are you mask? Wear them. People say, I got too much faith to wear my mask. I got enough to wear mine. You say, you ain't got it on now. It's in my pocket right here. And again, I didn't explain that. I know these people. I know what they're at. But when I go somewhere out in a crowd, when I go to the Walmart, they say they want you to wear them. They ain't got to tell me to wear them right. or any other place. Let's just be humble before God. What does humble mean? It means just obey him. Yeah. Do what he says. And don't try to do the battle by yourself. Don't try because you won't, you won't be able to do it. Now, battling in faith is the power we're given. I, there's a lot of things out here I can't control, but I control what I think. 
by rebuking what ain't right and what this word says not do. So can you try it? Try it. Try it. Try it. Try him. Try his plan. That's it. His plan. Come to him. Repent. Say, Father, I believe that Jesus was born of a virgin. I'm teaching, I'm going to tell you the gospel now. You believe that Jesus was born of a virgin, lived a sinless life, died an atoning death, and was raised in justification and resurrection, and if by faith we'll come to him, he will start intervening in the parts of our life we can't change. And what happens to you will be real. But you've got to have a guide to show you what to do. And you know these stop signs and things like that that you see? Them guides. Even these GPS and them guides, that's, that's what they are, to guide you to a place and stay on the path. Believe me, if you'll come to him, yeah. let the spirit in him, in you, speak the word, stay faithful, and don't give up, he'll make it all right. He'll make it all right. He'll make it all right. It don't matter what's coming or going. He'll make it all right. You do your part, and he'll make it all right. So thank you for listening, and I hope you try. Not, not because I say it, but because the Bible teaches it. Yeah. Right. All right, for prayer request, you can send a private message, Facebook, com forward slash, what the world needs is Jesus. If you want to call or text, you can call Brother Ricky Phillips, 256-630-1262. Brother Larry Moss at 256-603-0641. Brother Kenneth Crane, 256-557-2858. Or you can uh, call me at, at Brother Harold O'Neill, 256 256- Four seven five five eight five four, or you can email us at what it, the world needs is Jesus at gmail dot com. And again, that's that's God's advising every one of us today. Turn to Him, and you'll see. Turn to Him. God bless each one of you, and come unto the Lord. And he'll give you that rest. Amen. Thank you so much. Till next time. Hallelujah. I hear the sound of a mighty and it's closer now than it's ever been and I can almost hear the trumpet as Gabriel sounds the call At the midnight cry, we'll be going home. When Jesus steps out on a cloud to call his children, the dead in Christ shall rise. that remain will be quickly changed at the midnight cry when Jesus comes again
I look around me and I see prophecy fulfilling. Oh, in signs of the times, they're appearing everywhere. I can almost hear the Father as He says, Son, go get your children at the midnight cry. The bride of Christ will rise when Jesus steps up. The dead in Christ shall rise to meet Him in the air. And then those that remain will be quickly changed at the midnight cry. When Jesus comes again, when those that remain will be quickly changed at the midnight light. When Jesus comes again. At the midnight cry, when Jesus comes again, when Jesus comes again. Hallelujah. I know I'm looking forward to that day myself. <laughs>